What's up everybody, this is Flash Knight here to bring you a video on how to create a UML diagram using DIA. And if you're at this video, I assume you already have DIA installed, there's no trouble to the installation. You just go to, you type in DIA Diagram Editor and go ahead and download that on the internet. And once you have that, you come into the application and get started. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a class. So this is how you create a class. Well first let me let me show you this. It might be a little confusing. You don't want to have a flow chart or sorted. You want UML. So UML you come to this, click on that like that. Let me take that one out. You double click it to open up what needs to be opened. You know to open the class, attributes, operations, whatnot. So I'm just going to name this foo. Um, today we're going to pretend that foo is a is a company and that you know within you know they, they're a retail company they sell knickknacks or whatever you want and they're, of course they're gonna have customers okay so at the top of here we're just gonna have foo and we're going to apply that notice that if I check in attributes visible it opens that operations visible it opens that but I don't want any of these open because if you have it like this that implies that there are none if you have it like this that just means that you haven't touched up on that subject yet. So I want to keep it like that. We're going to do the same for customer. Take those out. And we're going to aggregate. See this? You click on the bigger part and you take it to the smaller. What I mean by that is that customer that let me make this nice and flush. That customer is a part of foo because with, without customers foo wouldn't be in business so customer is a part of foo so the diamond needs to be at the bigger part and the line needs to be at what's a part of that so within customer we're going to have we're going to have a uh, personal information so personal info and this we are going to have attributes and operations attribute um, name we're going to have their billing address. We're going to have their shipping address as well as their email address. So let's go on that. Uh, I'll show you. Come over here and click apply. It applied what we just entered in here and in here. Operation will just have create customer and void and notice they already add in apply they already add in the parentheses and colon so that's fine with personal info also going to be aggregation that's not what I wanted uh, wait no yes it is <laughs> trick me also gonna have aggregation I don't know what happened there I kinda messed up up there so we're gonna have aggregation to personal info and we're also going to create <coughs> Uh, what do we want to create? Purchase. Purchase with attributes. Um, products. This is pretty much how the customer goes out to check out. You know, we could have check out within here, but this is just a basic idea of how to use DIA. This isn't going to be a full on pr program or project that I'm creating right now. So. We're going to have customer personal info and then within customer we're going to have purchase and on their purchase order so I could write purchase order but we'll just keep it purchase product product amount notice I put it like this instead of saying like you would on a CRC card which if you don't know what those are I created a video on that or I'm about to create a video on that as well Go ahead and check that out because that's important to this whole process. CRC card, you do something like has amount of products within, you know, the purchase order has the amount of products. I spelled that wrong. Has the amount of products. But on this, you want to have product amount like you are declaring it and creating it within an actual program. And then uh, payment method, of course, because they have to pay for what they're buying. 
So let's apply. You see that there. Let's go to operations. And what do you want for operations? Replace their order void as well as authorize the payment. Authorize payment or authorize charge. Either one, you know, whatever. And boy, I just leave I leave this alone for basic UML. I'm sure a lot of you who are on this tutorial are creating a UML for your class. So it's appropriate to Oh Lord. It's appropriate to just uh, leave everything else the same unless your teacher tells you otherwise, which I doubt they will, because this is a standard. So let's also create an invoice. We're going to do the same thing as everything else. Invoice is going to have, you know, what products are shipped, item price, some says, so you know, some of the item prices. Ship handle cost. Uh, you want to keep it consistent. Shipping and handling cost, as well as sales tax. And then you want, oh no, I keep moving that. And then you want the total price for all of that. Notice that item price sum is just the sum of all the products. And then in addition to the shipping and handling cost and sales tax, that's how you get the total price of. That, that's what the customer paid this is the total price and then you want the estimated ship date so the customer knows when to expect their package and sorry if there's a uh, I delete that sorry if there's a little bit of noise with my keyboard uh, I have to use my backup because my other one my other one kind of broke but yeah, it is what it is so operation we're just going to send the invoice and apply okay I'm gonna do the same thing here. And if you want, just show you a couple other things. See, this is the main main thing that you have to do with the UML diagram for, for school. Uh, if you want to, you know, say that, let me double click on the aggregation, what do they call it? Yeah, aggregation line. See, one class is a part of another, saying that customer is a part of foo. So if I want to do that, show direction, yes, and feature. Not if I want to do that, but if I want to add something like this feature on there, and it shows that invoice is a feature of customer, I can. I normally don't put that on aggregation. I would normally put that on something like something like uh, an association, showing that they're associated with each other and that this is a feature of that. But I'm saying that this is a part of that because I wouldn't call it a feature. But let's uh, just take that off. Okay, and that's how you create a UML diagram within DIA. You can come over here and mess, you know, if you need to use realizes or generalization or implementations or constraints or any of this. I never, I never really use any of these, but if you need to use any of these, just you know, come to UML under here and here are your symbols. So I hope you learn from this. If so, please. Like, comment, and subscribe, and check out some of my other videos. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.